Hi, I'm Megan Walker and welcome to 365 Community Chats. So what is this? Well, it's a podcast and YouTube video series where I sit down and chat with members of the Power Platform, Dynamics and Microsoft community. So sit down, get comfy and let's catch up with someone. In episode two of 365 Community Chats, I'm having a sit down with the wonderful Amy Holden. Amy is a self-proclaimed ABC enthusiast, standing for anything but code. However, after our conversation, I think I disagree. Amy's dipping a toe in code more and more these days and is writing fantastic blog posts using Power Automate and how it can be used to get more out of Dynamics 365 marketing. So let's have a chat with Amy. Hi, Amy. Oh, hello there, Megan. Megan V. Walker. How are you? How are you, Amy Holden with an E? Amy Elizabeth Holden with an E. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think you should start putting that into all of your uh, content and promotional stuff. Is that Amy when you brand an E. Holden? Yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> so, Amy, so for people listening, you sound similar to me in your accent. But yet you're in Australia. Why is that? Um, so I got to the age of about 24. Mm. Things were going really well. I had a really good job, really good. Not even, was it 25? I don't know. Is it the point where I was either, I need to grow up and buy a house because that's what grown-ups <laughs> do or move to Australia. So I moved to oh. Australia because I don't so want how to be did grown you up. Move, well, how did you move? Like, what, did you go like on a like an internship or like a specific visa? Like, or did you just show up and be like, I'm here? <laughs> Not quite. Um, when my dad told his friends at work, they thought I was gonna go do like banana picking. Um, but no, I tried to move with my company, IBM at the time. And that mm -hmm. dragged on for like a year. They were like, yeah, you're gonna go, you're gonna go. And then they pulled the rug from under my feet like at the last minute. And I went, you know what, screw you guys. I'm going oh, anyway. No. Um. And I actually managed to get a referral from someone at IBM to the company that gave me the job. So I had a job before I left with a company called Blue Leader. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say you so were I like... my PR and stuff like that. Yeah. I thought you were just going to be like, so I just showed up. <clears throat> <laughs> I just turned up at IBM offices, knocked on the door like, hello. <laughs> Yeah. Can I come in, please? <laughs> um, but no, I'm really grateful, actually. I'm glad that I left IBM. I learned a lot more joining a smaller consultancy. Um, and it's where I am today. So, well, it's where I've, it's helped me get to where I am today. Um, so, yeah, kind of grateful they kicked me out. And that was that company, um, the dynamic, like a dynamics partner? Yeah, so they were mostly SAP, but they had a small section that was Dynamics 365. There was probably about three three to five of us, varying numbers. Right. But this SAP, again, was only about 80. So it was a small company, right. um, completely different to what I've been used to with the big top four, big yeah. corporate world. So it was a massive change, learned a lot. But I realized that's more like what I want to do with my life. Right. And so doing that and then learning dynamics like what was it that because you've you've done recently what I did last year and jumped off a cliff and said I can do this I don't need anybody <laughs> else I can do this on my own so you've gone out solo so what what do you think it was yes. that made you come to that realization that that was going to be the right next step for you yeah so when i was with the smaller company i got that feeling of like i worked directly with the customers i knew them all very well it was more personal lots of smaller projects a bit more all over the place but i really enjoyed that so i was like okay this is more me and i built a lot of confidence because in smaller companies like you are the architect you are the project manager you are the ba like you you wear every hat so yeah. i push myself a lot more than what I would have a bigger project because you would have gone, oh, that's a solution architect's job. So I really enjoyed that. And then that company got acquired by DXC, which are another big corporate company. And I kind of got sucked back into the corporate world, whether I liked it or not. And that's yeah. when I realized even more, I was like, oh, this is not for me. 
<laughs> hold the phone, I'm out. But the issue was I didn't have <laughs> permanent residency in Australia. So I had to be employed or else I'd have to go home. And mm -hmm. at some points I thought, I'll just go home and do contracting there. But then in the end, I managed to get my PR through. So I'd already, I probably would have done it a year sooner if I could. But once yeah. I got my permanent residency visa, that meant I could not be employed by someone. And then I just went full cowboy and ran for the hills. Cowboy. <laughs> Yahoo. So in terms of your, I'm curious now, I know this has got nothing to do with dynamics, but I'm just um, curious. Your permanent residency, the word permanent sounds like you shouldn't have to, but is that something, I know when I lived in the US, even though at one point I had a green card, it was a 10 year green card. So do you, is that, is permanent a real world word that means what I think it means? So you don't have to do anything <laughs> else? So yeah, in theory, I can just stay as a permanent resident. I don't need to do anything else. Um, but if I stay for, I think it's like two or three years extra, so five years in total from when I moved here, I can apply mm -hmm. for citizenship. Um, and then I think at some point my permanent residency might expire if I leave Australia. Um, but yeah, then if I yeah, go for citizenship, absolutely. then that's with me forever. And I get yeah. the dual passport and all that good business. Yeah, that's what, that's what I did with US and that's why I did it is so that if we ever needed to go back because my husband's American then it wasn't that whole process of visas again and all the rest of it it's like hey I've got this citizenship so it's fine I can just sort of come and go so that's really cool so in terms of your uh some might say we're competitors uh uh to have <laughs> fight <laughs> about marketing um we did our wonderful probably my my favorite presentation that I've ever done um, is that, the that most one fun. we did for Scottish Summit? Um, this was it this year. I was going to say last year, but it was this year, wasn't it? Was it um, February? Was it early this year? Yes, mm, yes, it was this year. So we did our our session that was um, the Click Dimensions versus Dynamic Six Six Five Marketing, which Ultimate yeah, battle. it's marketing marketing all the way. Um, but what 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 was it that sort of got you into doing stuff with the marketing app in the first place? Were you drawn to it first and then started learning more? Or was it like you were thrown into a project and you sort of had to figure it out? Yeah, um, I did it because someone told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you little child. <laughs> I know. Um, so it was my manager actually at the time with a, when I was with the small company he said you should look to specialize in like a specific area. Mm. And the only area that I'd not really done much with was marketing. I knew that it had come out as this new thing and I knew nothing about it. It was one of those things where I was like, I know it does something. I know nothing. <laughs> like I know sales, the customer service is comfortable. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay. Um, so I spoke to him about like my goals and development. I was like, I'm going to start looking into dynamics marketing. He went, don't bother. It's a pile of crap. <laughs> oh. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. Well, it was, to be fair, it was a pile of crap for a while, wasn't it? It was a pile of crap. Yes. Sorry. But the old was. premise that it was a pile of crap. And it was, it, it, it was a pile of crap. And I think most people yeah. will admit that. So um, I started just getting into it. And I started just writing blogs and digging into it, doing presentations. And I really enjoyed it because every time I did something, I was learning something that I didn't already know. So it wasn't like a rinse and repeat thing. So I was learning and then essentially documenting it and sharing it with some other people. Plus it's pretty new. So I kind of went with the whole, you want, you want, you, everyone's known for something, right? Yeah. I'm sat here talking to him, G Megs and customer voice and forms pro lady, right? <laughs> like you've got to be known for something. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. And a lot of people, lots of people do sales. Lots of like, I was very much in the dynamics world. I was like, I'm going to go with something that's a bit new. It's a bit out there. Mm -hmm. it works out pretty well. Um, so it's easier to get known for stuff that's not as popular as you yeah. also know. Um, Absolutely. so I kind of just rode that wave. And then also I started to see like, it was important. Like they kept putting money into it. They kept putting new features in, like, it wasn't like they just threw it out there and left it to go cold. Like there was so much yeah. room for improvement and it was moving. So I was like, I'm going to ride with this, but I actually think I wrote blogs about it and was known for it before I'd ever actually done a project with it. <laughs> 
I yeah, absolutely 100% the same. I was like, oh crap, I haven't actually ever implemented this. And then people would come and be like, oh, can you implement it? I'm like, sure. Yes, I think so. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? And I think also you were writing about it before I'd really felt like it was getting good to where I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. he's writing about it and I'd read them. So, so I'd learn stuff from your blogs. Um, and then again, it got to the point where I'm like, okay, now this is it. It was like all of a sudden you looked at it and it's like, it's turned this massive, massive corner, isn't it? Um, exactly. I, I think, yeah. But I, yeah. I don't know what it's like in Australia, like where, you, where you are in the UK, it feels like there's such a small, small group of like people, never mind partners, but a group of people that could actually implement it or know it or understand it. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. that's the thing is if you've been on the journey of it was crap and you knew it when it was crap and now you can see like, oh, okay, finally, here's where, here's where this area excels or here's where that area is about to have a lot of money put into it. Um, and then being, being in our very lucky position of being an MVP where we get to see and, and give feedback to the product team that, that for me has probably been the Definitely. most valuable part of being an MVP. And knowing so. what's coming down the pipe so you can push your customer down the right way without officially saying, I know what's going to happen in a few months. I can be like, I think we should start doing this. So then future yeah. you is cruising. They're like, oh, look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't I brilliant? <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think that- Mystic that, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the benefit of it is, is, you're right, is knowing that you're, you're making the right decisions now based on what you, either think or know will probably happen later on. So, so what would be yeah. the biggest thing that you would like to see happen in the, in the marketing app? Like, is there anything where you're like, Oh, I just wish this would happen. <laughs> or, or is that too controversial? Oh, I was going to say, how, how long have you got? No, <laughs> no. Um, it's, it's come on massively. I think for me, it's getting almost getting back some functionality that we lost when we moved to real time marketing. I'd love to be able to function on just real-time marketing alone and yeah. not just function, but do it nicely. Um, mm -hmm. Cause there's a lot of things that we gain from real-time marketing coming out, but there's also a lot of things we lost, even simple things like the subscription center and being able to brand it with the company's logo and styling gone. Yeah. And that to me is a basic. So there's some stuff that we had that's been taken away, but we've kind of been traded for something that is also really cool, like all these triggers and the fact you can use flow, like it's super exciting, but I, I just want it all. Sorry guys. I will both. No, I agree. I agree. It's, it's, it, and hopefully that's, that's where they end up going where, where for sure. it's not like, Ooh, that's outbound and that's real time. It's just, this is the marketing app and you don't have to think about, well, if I do this over here, then I've still got all of this other stuff going on over here and never the two shall meet. Then, then that's, that's the challenge. Yeah. So, um, so anything else that you either are currently working on or have seen that's coming out that like you're really excited about. So not necessarily might not be anything new. It might be something new to you that you're sort of like, Oh, I really want to get into this. So I'm really starting to sort of like dip my toe in another area. Yeah. So there's something that I'm doing that not even you know about yet. So here's a nice surprise. You're gonna, you're gonna love it. I don't even know anything. <laughs> I know. I saved it especially. Oh, okay. It's because well, I've been me. banging my head on a wall against it. Okay. So because I've been doing some stuff with George Javinsky around this citizen can, I'm becoming a bit of a wizard with Power Automate. So right. I've done a lot of basically George teaching me the more advanced things that you can do in Power Automate rather than just mm -hmm. the basic send an email go to Bing Maps and get the location. Um, and really getting the most out of it, like things like expand and passing JSON and all the scary things that used to scare me. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm getting a lot more confident with flow, which is really cool, like really, really cool. Nice. And then I've recently been working with Microsoft Bookings. Um, so I know you've written a few blogs about creating yeah. bookings. Yeah. Um, and some things that you can do. And that was very helpful to get me started. But then mm -hmm. myself and I, I went digging in some Google Docs and found a bookings API. Don't this tell me you've been, been using the bookings API. 
Yes. Oh, oh she has. Nice. Oh, she has. <laughs> Using the API, Empower Automate, I can create staff, I can create schedules, oh, I can create in. bookings straight from Dynamics. So I, can, you, I can create a unique blog? link for you to go and book a meeting with me. When are your, <laughs> I just when finished are your it today so it actually out? works. <laughs> when are, you, when are your um, blogs coming out? <laughs> a few weeks. Soon. Right. Soon. So <laughs> this, is, this is, I I have a bit of a problem though. Uh, I think we need to talk because you have your little catchphrase with your name, ABC. <laughs> that is now <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> So it, if any, anyone listening that doesn't know, Amy um, is anything but code. So it's Amy anything but code Holden. Um, that's now complete crap because I would yeah. say you're definitely now, in the, <laughs> you're now delving more into like a world of things that a developer might do, a low level developer, but a developer might do. Yeah. Anything what but have you code got to say for yourself? APIs and flows and Jason. I don't want to talk about yeah. it. I'm having a career crisis. <laughs> mm. I think it needs to be SABC. Sometimes anything but code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, SABC. It's not quite no. the same ring, but no, it doesn't. We can it work doesn't. on it. ABC. Might have to be Amy Little. Holden. No, ABCD. Anything but code slash depends <laughs> so we could go with that <laughs> as i go so, i'm gonna add it i'll add the d you should add the d so um the, the, the that's that's absolutely awesome and that is one of the things where when i when i started doing that and i was delving into it and i was like oh can you do anything with with power automate and i kind of got to the point where i'm like okay i'm done with booking and moving on to something else but that was something that people would always ask and, 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 you know, be trying to sort of figure out the fact that you've done that and the way in which you explain things in your blogs, which by the way, um, when was it? Yeah. Earlier this week, I've been doing the event triggers and creating event trigger, uh, for a client and guess whose blog was open oh. on the other screen as reference. Seriously. So the, oh. the way in which, yeah, Stop no, it. it really good so the way in which you explain stuff i am really eager to see your your bookings to see if i can then follow and be like oh okay because i've voided the stuff with the api in the gr open graph or whatever it is i was like yeah yeah mm -mm. um and probably same as you not not because i don't think that i have the brain power to figure it out but the amount of time that it would take me to figure it out on my yeah. own but I just, I just, I don't yeah. have it. So, so, so that's, that's what a lot of people need is somebody like you that will then take that time and then be able to wrap your head around it and be like, okay, this is how I can then explain it to somebody else. So good for you. Exactly. Kudos, Aim. And I guess it's Alex. Well, it's Bruce's fault because he promised to the customer that we could do it. Then he was like, Amy, uh, go find something. <laughs> No, I was like, job, okay, too. there's nothing like a bit of pressure to get stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. I'm very, very pleased. Um, so yeah, so your, like I said, your, your blog, um, the things that you've been figuring out with real time marketing have been fantastic. Um, and I just, in my A to Z of, uh, real time marketing, I, the letter M was, uh, very creatively making event triggers. Um, and I've been thinking, <laughs> used your um your blog as my example in the video so i basically did the uh, creating an event trigger that you would use like say when a case was closed and the trigger would happen when the case is closed and then you would pass through all of the information and your power automate your flow would create your survey invitation using the um, customer yes. voice access. So I use that and I, and I mentioned you in the blog as well. And I've put a link to your blog oh, in thanks. the YouTube description. Um, and I was like, if you haven't read it, you need to read Amy Holden's blog. So, so <laughs> no, stop true. paying you for this. <laughs> we need to support each other. So I guess, um, one last thing in terms of, um, where you are, uh, where you live currently is Sydney, right? Mm -hmm. Where you are. Yeah. So yes, it's Sydney. Is Sydney still in lockdown or are you out completely or are you in partial or where no. are you at at the minute? 
So we're, I think we officially came out of lockdown like seven or eight weeks ago, sometime in October. Um, and then they're kind of doing the whole like, oh, if you're not vaccinated, you can't do this. But then they're talking about just okay. dropping all of that for Christmas because COVID doesn't care about Christmas, apparently. Um, but I'm quite a content little hermit and I quite like staying at home and working from home. And I don't really care that lockdowns stopped. <laughs> No, I think that's fair. I think I can relate. Um, so in terms of any anyone that you share your life with, I'd like to know about. Ooh. <laughs> Do you want me to see if I can is, get her? Is Let she there? Find her. Yeah. <laughs> she is. So uh, for anyone listening, because uh, obviously this is a podcast and uh, silence doesn't work, Amy has a new very new friend um called cleo and it's this is cleo. Uh, what, breed, what breed is she what breed is she? she's a staffy cross something um we think um a whippet cross with a whippet she's got really long legs and she moves real fast but this is my she's, baby rescue puppy cleo she's lovely so amy's rescued this beautiful dog um and so that's who you're gonna spend christmas with Absolutely. She's the best yeah. Christmas present ever to myself. Absolutely. absolutely. She's, um, yeah, I've, I've loved being a dog mum. I've always wanted one. I always asked my mum and dad to have one and they always said no. <laughs> um, and then I finally realised at the age of 29 that I could just get my own dog anyway and I don't need their permission. Yeah, and you like can do whatever you cat. want. She just chills yeah. out. Yeah. You can have cereal for dinner. <laughs> you can have chocolate for breakfast. You can do whatever you want when you're an adult. <laughs> Exactly. Nice. I'm old enough to know. I'm old enough to be able to do it. Yes. Uh, what is it? Something about not being able to being old enough to know to do better, but ignoring myself and doing it anyway. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I'm so glad that you came on and you chatted with me. So I really appreciate it. Lovely um, to talk to you. I know. We should do it more often. I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure All right. Will. Thanks, Amy. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching this episode of 365 Community Chats. I'm your host, Megan V. Walker, and I'll be back soon chatting with someone else from the Power Platform, Dynamics, and Microsoft community. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications.